probably the one that most uh, teachers and writers go to first is Google Images, which you can see on the screen. Uh, recently, I've been writing some materials on technology. So if I type the word plugin to Google Images, it will give me a whole range of different plugs to choose from. If I want to check the legality of these images, because most people just sort of copy and paste these images without um, thinking about how legal they are, you go to this section at the top of Google Images, click on Settings and click Advanced Search. Now, Advanced Image Search gives you a few choices because if you scroll down, for example, you can have a choice on image size you can choose the type of images you want to look for, uh, aspect ratio of different colors. If you're looking for something, maybe you just want black and white images, uh, types of images, uh, region, which for example, for plugs might be important uh, that you, you choose a different region. The, the important thing I want to draw your attention to though is usage rights here, um, where um, if you were to write some materials and include an image and you were thinking of selling those materials or sharing them on the internet, you really need to check the legality of what you're doing. So if you click on Creative Commons licenses, Google will only show you the images which contain Creative Commons licenses. So the photographer has included uh, Creative Commons to, with the image and will give you an indication of how you can use it. You might not have to pay anything for using the image, but you might need to source the creator. Um, so it'll give you choices or the image might have come from a photo stock site. So there might be commercial and other licenses attached to the image. For more details on that, click on the usage rights listed there on Google Images and it will tell you more about it. But for any kind of use of images in, in, in a commercial or a public kind of way, you really need to know um, what the deal is uh, with the image. So that's Google Images, probably the most, most used uh, resource. Um, other sites, well, in terms of um, payment, uh, I like Getty Images a lot. You can have a subscription to Getty Images. I mean, we talk a lot about using free images, but I think, well, I want people to buy my materials. So what's wrong with me spending a bit of money paying a photographer for their creative work? So you can sign up for Getty Images and find some nice resources there. Uh, Shutterstock is very well known uh, for finding kind of basic images. It certainly is limited in certain ways. For example, if you type in business people, so I write business uh, English materials, sometimes you'll see quite a few sort of stereotype images from the from the workplace that aren't really suitable or aren't don't really reflect, for example, diversity and inclusion. On the topic of diversity and inclusion, a couple of sites that people have mentioned to me recently that I think are quite interesting. Uh, this one, uh, blackillustrations.com, gives you a variety of uh, illustrations, a uh, lot more diverse images to choose from. Um, another site someone mentioned recently is nappy.co, which is photos of black and uh, brown people for free. Um, so more and more of these sort of stock sites are now popping up. My Probably my basic go-to one is Pixabay because I like Pixabay because if I just want to find a basic image of something, I will usually find it here. So if I type in uh, plug again, I will get lots of nice images of plugs, some of them a bit arty, um, but a, a nice wide choice and quite interesting images. A lot of the images on Pixabay are free, um, but I actually, I sign up, I have a paid account with them because the images that you pay for are actually usually better quality, there's a better choice. Um, and again, I think photographers ought to be paid for their work or at least credited. On the subject of crediting photographers, if you use um, a site like Unsplash, Unsplash has become really popular because the images are free images, but when you choose an image, um, 
you're often asked to credit the person who took the image. So let's try something. Instead of putting in plug, we're going to go for flower because Unsplash is particularly good at, at sort of slightly more abstract images or more arty images. So you'll find all sorts of kind of interesting stuff. It, I find it, let's, let's put in, for example, um, uh, people waiting. Um, if I want a, an image that's more for kind of higher order thinking or higher order discussion, Unsplash is particularly good. It doesn't give you the sort of photo stock images. You'll get more kind of uh, interesting images, say from a train station. So here, for example, a uh, nice image of somebody waiting at a tube station being thoughtful. So it allows more questions to be asked about maybe what's the person thinking, um, what's just happened to them, those kind of more higher order thinking questions. The problem with Unsplash is it's becoming so popular, people are using the images in their presentations, their webinars. I'm starting to recognize certain Unsplash images appearing uh, in different webinars and different materials. And this is the problem with really good websites with a limited number of images, you start to see the same images being reused. Back to the topic of legalities in terms of uh, use of images, Creative Commons and photographers who um, have a CC Creative Commons license on their work. Creative Commons has a website with all the information about the legalities of, of using images, um, but it's now set up a sort of picture search space on Creative Commons where um, you can actually type into Creative Commons itself and it will generate images. So let's try one. Let's put in um, car. And it will give me over 10,000 images related to the topic of cars. But each one, you will be able to find out the level of the Creative Commons license. And then at the side there, it'll list the different vari various types of licenses connect with, connected with the image. So Creative Commons, as well as being a way for photographers to protect their work, it's also making become the site has become very user friendly for um, materials writers. That's all for now. Maybe when you finish watching this video in the comments section below the video, you could uh, mention some of the other sites where you get images from for your materials and how you go about selecting the images. But I hope that was helpful.